Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about um, an all digital future for gaming. Uh, the pros, the cons, why I actually think it's a mostly good thing. Uh, why we don't need to worry about it yet, but why there's still some concerns that exist and have existed for quite some time that aren't necessarily specifically to an all digital future, but do have to do with the way games are being delivered to us currently. Uh, and why personally I've been embracing digital more and more and more for even some reasons that aren't on this list that are just personal to me. So first off, let's go over the cons because I think it's the easiest thing to talk about are the cons. And before I do that, I do want to remind you, we do still have a giveaway going on right now for a $100 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift card for a copy of Monster Hunter Rise, which by the way, arrives in three days. And the thing's getting like high 80s reviews. It's pretty crazy. So we're definitely going to be a big mega hit on Switch. Uh, we also have two $20 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift cards to give away as well for four total winners this month. So head down to the pinned comment or the description to enter. All right. So I got a list of stuff here that I want to go over. This is stuff that I was able to think about and research and look into and see what people's real concerns uh, are. And obviously, uh, the big concern about going with an all-digital future is the internet is required. Not everyone has internet. Not everyone has fast internet. Obviously, this doesn't really necessarily apply to people watching my video. Um, most of you guys, if you can watch YouTube videos, probably have good enough internet uh, barring data caps to be able to partake in an all digital future, but it is a concern. A concern I think is lessened by the fact that on everything but Switch, you have to install games anyways, and those take forever. But yes, it is a concern if you're someone who is in a place that doesn't have internet, or has really slow internet, or has data caps, an all digital future is going to be pretty difficult to swallow, at least at this time. I think that concern is slowly going away, by the way. Uh, and obviously, we know like Elon Musk is trying to launch like this global, eventual, you know, mesh satellite network. But, anyways, uh, that's just a concern that does technically still exist because there are still some people that have to worry about it. Probably not people watching my video, but people who can't watch things like YouTube. All right, uh, concerns over companies shutting down online services on older hardware uh, causing a loss to game access. Uh, this is obviously a concern that's always going to be around until something changes in the industry. Uh, right now, if Nintendo shuts down the Nintendo Switch online servers, not just the service, but they shut down the actual eShop, I can't re-download my games. So if my Switch breaks, I can't get those games again. This is in addition to some games that require online checks and verifications to even use them, even if you own the physical version. It could still require online checks and verifications to play the games. So once those servers are gone and they get rid of the shops, you can't get those games back. At least you can't get them back from Nintendo. We'll get into that later. You can technically still get your games and eventually play them on those systems again. But it's still a concern. Uh, it, it's a valid concern. Uh, and it's one that something has to change in the industry for that to happen. The industry actually needs to lean more into PC gaming, not less. But we'll get into that later why this isn't really a concern on PC and could be alleviated on these platforms, especially if they keep going with a unified uh, style of uh, development of their hardware moving forward where they're using the same architecture. But we'll get into that towards the end of the video. Uh, another con is in regards to games as a service, because obviously one way an all digital future works is games as a service like Game Pass. Uh, you don't have any control over what games are added or removed from that service, even though as we have seen with TVs and, and movies, what typically happens is a movie's removed off one service, it gets added to a different one. So if it gets removed off Netflix, it'll appear on Hulu, it'll appear on various other services, Amazon Prime. Um, sometimes the, the movies are just outright removed altogether. Uh, same with certain TV shows. I understand this can be really frustrating, and it is something that I even get frustrated with. I've seen, you know, House MD as an example bounce between three different services. Um, it is what it is. Um, that's just part of dealing with the as a service part. But you can obviously still purchase them individually, digitally. Technically, like House MD, you can actually buy physically as well. Physical media is not actually gone for movies and DVDs, but our movies and TV shows. But anyways. Um, getting into this even deeper, getting into this even deeper, technically you don't own your games. That's obviously a concern for many people. They want to own their games. They want to have a physical product they can hold. Uh, and that's again, a valid thing outside of the fact that technically, even when you own the physical product, you just own the right to use a license that can be revoked. You don't actually own the game itself. 
very technical details. Not sure if this has ever been tried in court to even see if this holds up. Um, but obviously, uh, that affects things like your ability to resell games. Uh, you can't resell digital copies, although some people do try selling their digital Steam accounts illegally. It's kind of weird. Uh, but you can't resell copies of games. Um, and so that's kind of all tied into the hood. You don't own it. You can't resell it. Um, we'll get into that a bit later, too, because i got some personal reasons why I actually kind of like that, to be honest. Um, all right. It's slightly harder to share games. Um, it, it basically, right now, like if you own a Switch and you have a copy of Mario Odyssey, I can hand it to my friend Eric, and he could just play it. He could stick it in his, his thing and play. Uh, right now, if he wants to play any of my digital games on Switch... Technically, I can log into my account on his Switch, and then he could play those games, um, as long as I'm not logged in and playing those games. Uh, so technically, it's almost easier since I don't have to meet with someone physically. I just have to exchange login details. Hopefully, you trust the person you're giving your login details to, um, and that hopefully have your card locked down on your account so you can't just like, you know buy games on your account but the point is that technically it's a little bit easier since you don't even have to meet up with someone to share games and you can share a wider breadth of games at a single time but again it's not the same as handing someone a physical product that you own uh so again that's that's obviously a a, a concern um uh, beyond all that there's obviously questionable aspects uh that people seem to have a universal concern about but don't actually hold up uh, in the grand scheme. And that particularly is game preservation. So a lot of people worry that without physical media, there is no game preservation. And that's simply untrue. It's been untrue since digital became a thing and we've been getting tons of indie games that are digital only. You think those indie games are not preserved? Mm -mm -mm. It's actually easier to preserve games when they're on a physical hard drive than on a disc or on a cartridge because you have to have specialized tools uh, and oftentimes to dump games off of those onto, where are you dumping them to? Physical hard drives. It's actually not as hard to get the data off of those hard drives as it is off of the actual cartridges and stuff. So uh, it's kind of a misnomer that game preservation is ruined or, or in threat without like, oh my gosh, Mario 35 is going, going away at the end of the month. You don't think that application has already been dumped off of a switch onto the internet, stored in someone's cloud server or stored in someone's hard drive? Then you're dumb. Of course it is. And fans are going to bring that game back with online functionality, by the way, at some point down the road. Just because you won't be able to download it off Nintendo servers anymore doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to play the game in some form in the future. So game preservation isn't technically a real concern. Um, the concerns for that are just as relevant, whether it's physical or digital. You're going to dump it onto a hard drive. That's how you end up preserving games. Um, not by keeping them in sealed boxes on a wall or when the battery dies, the, the cartridge doesn't work anymore or whatever, like the old NES games. Some of the old NES games, anyways, the ones with saves and all that. All right, let's get into some of the pros now. We talked a lot about the negatives because I feel like the negatives are what people cling to. And I'm here to tell you right now that I'm not trying to convince you that you should be all for an all digital future. I do, want, I do think you need to be less scared of it than you probably are. And I do think that there is actually positives. And the positives to an all-digital future are essentially the same positives we already have today. Now, keep in mind, we are currently not all-digital. We do have consoles that are all-digital, digital only. PlayStation 5, all-digital edition. Xbox Series S, guess what? All-digital. I'm surprised we don't have an, an all-digital uh, Switch at this point. They actually allowed cartridges to be put on the Switch Lite. I thought for sure they would make Switch Lite digital only, but they didn't. Um, there's probably going to be future Nintendo platforms that are digital only. We've seen it in the past. PSP Go was digital only. Thanks. Shout out to Player Essence for reminding me of that. Also, by the way, Player Essence, by the way, is staunchly against um, on all digital future. So it'd be interesting to see if he makes a response video or live stream to this. Um, I love that man. I, it's, it's all right. Him and I often, about once a year or so, have some very differing opinions on things. And this happens to be one of them. And I'm sure you guys are going to have differing opinions than I do. But it gets, let's get into the pros. Because, yes, there's advantages to all digital. There's advantages to digital, period. In fact, those advantages are exasperated the more people that actually take advantage of them and start to realize that maybe things aren't so bad. So, first off, quicker access to games. 
You don't have to change out discs. You don't have to change out cartridges. Seems mundane, I know, uh, but it is it is what it is. You know, you, you get to preload games, so you don't have to wait for day one installs. Typically, like if you pre-order a digital game, you don't have to wait for for a pre-order. You know, you don't have to wait for an install at midnight. You can already have it installed. Sometimes you can even play it before midnight, which is awesome. So you get quicker access to games, and it's easier to swap between games. Um, it's just easier, period. You know, t t take advantage of one of the main things with the Xbox Series X, right? Wait, we have the, the suspend feature. where you are able to quickly switch between games. Well, if you have to keep swapping out discs, it's not really any quicker then, is it? So quicker access to games. It's just a convenience. It doesn't have to matter to you. But technically, it's an advantage. It is something that everyone can agree is good in general, I think. I don't think there's anyone that says, hey, getting into your games faster is a bad thing. Um, unless the game's crashing the faster you get into it. I, I don't know. Um, no stock issues. Can't find a copy of a game. I know this doesn't happen as often anymore. But it does still happen. Games can still be sold out. Don't have to worry about that in digital. It's always available. Well, until Nintendo removes things off the eShop on March 31st. But you know what I mean. It, it, in general, digital games are always available so long as the shop is available. Okay? Like, it's just, there's no stock issues. You never need to worry about when a game's going to go out of stock. Just period. You just don't have to worry about it. Um, it's better for the environment. Now, we don't like to talk about this very often because there's a lot of ins and outs in technology and the environment, uh, slave labor, and what some cr really bad crap that's happened in China, uh, and, and all this stuff. But when it comes just strictly to waste, when it comes to plastics that don't easily break down and often aren't recycled, when it comes to the metals and, and the certain fabrication methods used to make discs and cartridges, at the end of the day, no physical media means less waste ending up in landfill someday. And you might argue, I'm going to hold on to my collection forever. That's fine. But do you know your children are going to, or the people after that, or the people after that? It's eventually going to end up getting thrown out. It's just, is, it is what it is. That's just what's going to happen with most of them. And even if you're someone who can guarantee for life of the planet Earth that your copy of a game is never going to go in a landfill, okay, what about the millions and millions and millions and millions of other copies of that game? that are going to end up in a landfill. I mean, copies of E.T. that couldn't even sell it, they buried in a desert. Like, let's just be honest, okay? It is better for the environment to be all digital. It is maybe not an advantage to the consumer outside of creating a, you know, slightly improved way of life uh, for future generations. All right. I know, you can argue it's a pretty weak argument, but I wanted to bring it up because it's technically true. All right. So all your purchases are actually backed up. If someone steals a copy of your physical game, you have to go buy a new game. Plain and simple. You bring Switch games to school, you drop one on the bus, you lose it, you got to buy a new one. Digital? Huh? You break your Switch? You break your Xbox? You break? go buy a new system? Your entire library is there when you log in. Now, they might hold it at ransom, especially certain cloud save techniques. They might hold it at ransom behind a paid online service, but technically it's there Technically, you do not need to rebuy your games. So it's a massive advantage to not losing any of your games, at least for the lifetime of that platform, which we're going to get into in a little bit. Um, technically, right now, on every platform that isn't Switch, you install every game you own. So you put your disc in. So PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, uh, or, or you know Xbox One, PlayStation 4, you put your disc in, you know this way or this way, whichever way, uh, and you install a game. It could take minutes, could take hours, usually many hours, and there's day one updates. So the disc just acts as an unlock key. Yeah, it'll have some data on it to help with the initial install, but it's still basically just an unlock key. It doesn't do anything but protect you from not being able to play your game without the disc in. Games aren't read off the disc anymore. The disc is just e-waste. It, it's just an unlock key. Okay, so the pro here is that since you already have to install all your games, you already need day one updates, why the hell do should we have a disc to unlock it? Now, look, this doesn't get into some of the other reasons that you probably like physical. As an example, you're a collector. 
collectors like to have physical copies of things. They like to have physical products to hold. They like to, uh, you know, be able to take those products and use them um, and ha have them on a shelf. I have physical copies of Switch games. And, you know, uh, in fact, over here I've got, you know, what, a bunch of DS games. Um, I've got, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 physical Switch games or so. I got a few GameCube games over there. I got some, uh, what, three Xbox games, uh, maybe four. Uh, a couple old school PC games, Medieval Total War 2 um, and Witcher 2. I have those physically and Dishonored. I also have physically. Uh, and you'll see even a Mario 64 copy or like an NFL uh, game for the Sega Genesis. You'll see I have some physical copies of games. But that's about the extent of my collection. I own, between Switch, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and my PC, God, I must own like 2,000 games. My physical collection makes up like maybe 1%, probably less than that. Why? I grew up being a PC and Nintendo gamer. I'm still a PC and Nintendo. I mean, you see see the giant monitors back here? The, this, this, this one here is like my big giant widescreen one with 144 hertz. And then you know what? If I don't give a crap for about that and I want to go 4K60, I got this other monitor back here. Like, okay, cool. Like, I have always been a pc gamer and i've always been a nintendo gamer those are the two things i've consistently been and i went with pc when it went from physical media to now you don't even get disk drives with your laptops and computers anymore unless you special order them in and it's really hard to find really good laptops at good prices that even have a disk drive um why is that because everything now is digitally downloaded through steam um through uh other places you know good old games um the epic store like, there's just all these other delivery methods, you know, the Windows Store, the Xbox Store. Like, there's all these other delivery methods for games that ended up being this thing where we were initially irked we couldn't install games off of discs. But then, you know what happened? PC gamers accepted it. And PC gaming grew. PC gaming is bigger right now in 2021 with basically no physical media than it's ever been. There's more people enjoying games, not less. Now, this is the argument that goes against consoles being all digital because the reason PC can get away with it is on my PC, I can go back on my PC and still play a game like Return to Zork from, you know, 50 years ago. Like before I was even born, the game came on. Maybe it came out the, around the time. Anyway, it's, it's over 30 years old. I could go back and play that game still on this PC. You can't necessarily do that like on Switch. There's going to be NES games you can't play on Switch because they're not available through the online service or any other delivery method. The big advantage PC has is no matter how much you upgrade your hardware, you can always still partake in the older games. Sometimes they're broken for a little bit. That does happen. Sometimes fans have to go in and patch them. There'll be, there was a while I couldn't play Lords of the Realm 2 on uh, newer versions of Windows when Windows 10 came out because it just I couldn't get it to run. Uh, and then you know some fans came along, they patched the game, and now I can play it. So there is a lot of things when you look back at the history of PC that they've dealt with. And PC gaming has always been slightly more complicated. I don't think it's as complicated as people make it out to be, but I've also been PC gaming for a long time. Uh, but the thing is, we are perfectly fine being all digital on PC. I think the reluctance to all digital comes from a history of always having physical products available. I think our children today grow up not giving two shits about physical games. Think about it. Think about it. What are they probably going to be primarily gaming on when they're older? Just think about it. Like, realistically, what are young adults using more than anything? A cell phone. Hmm. There's no physical media I plug into this. How do I enjoy games on here? Oh, right. I download them off an app store. Right? doesn't matter what phone you have. You download your games off an app store. You digitally game. All right, well, maybe VR. Maybe my kids are going to get way into VR. Well, okay. Most VR games are delivered digitally. There's, I can't even think, maybe Beat Saber. There's, there's hardly like any that are available physically. So you're going to be playing those digitally. They're growing up where they have Netflix and Spotify. And they're just used to you use streaming services and you use um, digital downloads for everything. 
That's their world. The world that I came from, where we have physical products that we care about owning and collecting is going away. And the reason personally that I am now really deep in the, in the digital, and it's not because I'm a PC gamer, even though that happened ages ago. No, 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 no. The reason that I'm deep in the digital now is when I was in a financial uh, crisis back in 2019, I, I had a hard time in 2019, not 2020. Um, I ended up selling my entire physical collection of Switch games, which numbered almost 70 physical copies of games. It was a lot. I sold it because I needed the money, and that is right there a massive advantage to owning physical games, is that I had the ability to resell them, get a bunch of money, and pay some bills. Woo! Chalk one up for physical games. But I find that by having digital... I am less inclined to make poor decisions. And this is a personal thing. But as an example, let's say I really want to see the new movie at the movie theater. And I realize there's other ways to get movies now. But, and I just don't happen to have the money. I, I, you know, my friends are all going on this day. I'm not going to have the money for a week. Well, you know, I could grab a couple games off the shelf, go to GameStop, sell them, and there's my movie and my popcorn and my drink. Or I could just wait. What am I more likely to do? Grab, grab a couple games off the shelf and go actually go to the movie with my friends or wait a week and go by myself? Probably going to grab a couple games and sell it. But without that option available to me, I end up holding on to my games. I end up having a larger game library because I'm less tempted to sell games because I can't sell my digital games. When I buy a digital game, when I bought the, like PlayStation 5, right? I had the disc version of PlayStation 5 because it was the only one I could get <laughs> You know, with how hard it's been to get those. And I have no regrets. I am perfectly happy with that purchase. But I have yet to stick a physical disc in that wasn't a Blu-ray disc. I, I've played movies on it. But I haven't used it. I haven't actually used it for anything but playing games digitally. Every game I own is a digital download. Because I don't see the purpose of buying a disc when I have to install the game anyways. If I have to install the game anyways, unless I plan to resell it, like a Madden or an NBA game, which, you know, they get replaced every year, so maybe you want some resale value on that, what the hell's the point? And then on, on Xbox Series X, I own a single physical game that's specifically for that. It was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Otherwise, I just use Game Pass. And the big thing for me is I'm saving money. Steam sales, saving money. I'm saving money in this all-digital world you can hate game pass i love it oh they're gonna remove games someday okay but they're also adding more netflix removes things but then adds more it's okay to not just play the same game for 20 years it's okay to move on to newer stuff you know they fortnite goes down one day it's okay to move on to whatever a newer thing is like apex legends or something i'm just saying that it's okay to just partake in the digital and not feel guilty about it. My guilt went away a long time ago when I started realizing that, you know what, it's more convenient and it's just better. Now there's things that need to get improved, right? We recently just heard about PlayStation 3 and I think PSP and Vita having all their online shop shut down and there's a bunch of concern because, hey, look, there's games that require online checks on PlayStation 3. You won't be able to play them anymore. Uh, there, you know, If you're all digital there and your PlayStation 3 dies, how are you getting your library back? Well, I'm telling you right now how you get your library back is you go online, you download the ROM because every single PlayStation 3 game's already been dumped online and PlayStation 3's have been hacked. So you just hack your PlayStation 3, you dump your ROM, you put it on, back on the hard drive, bada bing, bada boom, and you're playing your PlayStation 3 games on a PlayStation 3. I know, again, it, 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 that's the thing. Game preservation, they've already been preserved. They're just taking away a convenience for you and that sucks. And this is what needs to change about game systems. We need to be able to carry over our library system to system to system. This is where game consoles are behind PC. You need to be able to carry games and game saves from system to system to system to system. It doesn't matter if it's the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 6, PlayStation 7. It doesn't matter if it's a Switch, Switch 2, Switch 3, Switch 4, Xbox X, Xbox Y, Xbox Z, Xbox A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It doesn't matter. You need to be able to bring your games and your game saves across all of them. Now look, Game Pass and xCloud 
are probably one of the more forward thought processes in game streaming. We're not getting quite into game streaming at this conversation because that, that is part of the digital future is game streaming. Well, that's, that's a whole different conversation. Um, it is, again, part of the equation, but not, not a part that's relevant to today's talk. I just want you guys to honestly look in the mirror and go, look, if you play on these other systems, why does it matter if you have a disc or not? Most of the games you play require updates anyway. So if your system dies and you put that disc in a new system and the online shop goes away, you still won't be able to play the game. You still won't be able to. So what's the difference? I, I, I'm actually imploring you. What is the difference? Now, look, there's going to be a lot of arguments down in the comments, I'm sure. People on one side of the fence or the other. Pro I assume most fans of my channel are probably all for physical media. And I'm not here to poo-poo on you. We don't live in an all-digital world right now, okay? Unless you're a PC gamer. If you are a console gamer, that's not the world we live in. We, have all, we, we, we are living in what I feel is the best of both worlds. We have every game available physically, except for obviously some, some indie games. A lot of indie games. Uh, and then we also have digital, and we also have games as a service. We have the whole world right now. This current generation of PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Switch is quite literally the best of all digital and physical worlds at once. This is maybe the greatest gaming generation ever for user choice. And that's awesome. But obviously, do we think this user choice is going to continue forever? Do we need to worry that physical games are going to wait? Maybe. I don't care if physical games stay around, by the way. I'm not here to advocate for we should have an all-digital future and physical games suck. It should just get... The I'm just saying that if it happens, I don't think it's the end of the world. Maybe I'm just embracing the younger generation that's coming up without physical media. I don't know. But maybe it's because I have a father with three kids and I'm starting to understand the value of digital over physical where my kids can't lose things. You know how many Switch games I've lost because of my kids? I don't got to worry about that anymore. I, I, I guess I, I'm just in this world where I actually am kind of appreciating the all digital and I'm appreciating that I own an entire platform in Xbox Series X that I just pay like a, a yearly subscription fee and I get pretty much all the games I want. They're adding all the EA games. They're adding all the Ubisoft games soon. They're trying to get Ubisoft Plus fully on there. You know, they keep expanding that service. We get all the Bethesda games on there moving forward. Like, I, I don't really have a reason to ever open my wallet again on that platform. Just pay my yearly fee and move on. I like that. I get access to more games than I would normally because it makes it cheaper. I like that there's a lot of digital game sales. And I'm not talking about... I don't want to go too deep in the sales because some people argue it, you know, there's more digital sales and physical sales. I think it's a ne negligible thing uh, because obviously there's times that you can get like physical games that are for 40, 45 bucks. Like even for Switch, like Breath of the Wild, get it for 45 on Amazon, still selling for 59.99 on Switch digital shop. So I, I think it's kind of a wash when it comes to sales. But, um, and I think maybe the biggest downfall is obviously user choice. When you go all digital, you're getting rid of the choice we have now. Right now as consumers, we have the best of all worlds and we have a lot of user choice. Uh, that user choice, if we do go all digital, does go away. And it just turns into, do you buy individual games digitally or do you use a service? Um, and that, that'll be the only choice we have someday if an all digital future comes. I'm okay with that future. I'm already starting to embrace that future. Most of my Switch games are digital. I have like 80 something games. Something like 70 of them are digital, you know? All my games on PlayStation 5 and Series X are digital. And I don't really see a reason to change that. Besides having a cool collection of cartridges in the background of videos that I'm never going to touch. I can't remember the last time I opened one of these cases. They just sit there. They're eventually going to rot out and be junk and garbage. But I mean, it looks cool. <laughs> I'll give you that. All right, that's just my take, though. I also don't keep my games in those cases, so that, that's also part of the reason that I don't get touched. I keep them in a separate uh, one of my Switch cases. Or not. Anyways, uh, you guys, uh, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to this. It's just all personal opinions. Uh, do you prefer physical? Do you prefer, prefer digital? Are you afraid of an all-digital future? Do you think an all-digital future is coming? Um, and what are your concerns, and what are the things you do love about digital? Maybe things I didn't even bring up. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.